Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with the Ryzen 3000 series, as the specifications of these CPUs has supposedly been leaked online by a Turkish retailer with the name of Ebra. Now, Ebra are not the first retailer to list various Ryzen 3000 series SKUs, including Bisgrim, and there have been a couple of others from Russia as well. But we do have a pretty comprehensive list of the specifications. I'm not going to read out all of them because they will be plonked on screen. But let's have a quick look. So the lowest end SKU is the Ryzen 9 3800X. The base frequency is 3.9 gigahertz, but all cores is going to be 4.7. Then you've got the 3700X, which is a 12 core processor. So the 3800X is uh, 16 cores. The clock frequency here is a little higher. So we're looking at five gigahertz for the turbo frequencies and 4.2 gigahertz for the base clock. So according to these numbers anyway, we're looking at 105 watts for the 12 core part, which has a 300 megahertz uh, clock speed advantage over the 3800X, which is 125 watts. And then you have the other CPUs in the lineup, including the low end SKU, which is the Ryzen 3 3300. It's a six core part for 3.2 gigahertz uh, for the base frequency and four gigahertz for the turbo frequency. Finally, we have the 3600 and 3600X. I want to bring these uh, up for just a second because this is clearly the silicon, or at least the final retail configuration of the silicon that we saw AMD demo uh, at CES 2019 uh, several months ago. So the base frequency here is 3.6 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz respective of either the 3600 or the 3600X. I'll be interested to see what the actual difference is in terms of if you can manually overclock the 3600 to 3600X speeds. So yeah, now once again, it's very hard to know whether this is genuine. Several users have written in to the uh, retailer, who once again are Turkish, they were told by the retailer that this is accurate information, although the CPUs are not actually available to purchase now. I actually wrote to them myself, but I'm English, so they may simply not understand the words I've written, although I do have a Turkish friend, so I might get him to bodge at them. So if these leaks are genuine or not, it's very difficult to know, because, well, let's face it, there has been no official confirmation from AMD themselves. These specifications, though, do look very close to what we see on Tech Power Up's CPU database. Um, so we're in for a couple of different scenarios here. The first scenario is that, well, basically, they just copied and pasted what looks fairly accurate. After all, the box art that we're seeing from their website is clearly not from Matisse for the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. So it's possible all they did is just go in and uh, take specifications from the internet and then wanted to grab back links, right, to rank their site higher. The problem is we don't know how many CPU cores the frequency that we're seeing reported is referring to. So for example, if the Zen 2 reports of 4.5 gigahertz are accurate, how many cores actually was that? Was it like all four cores? Because apparently the engineering sample CPUs that companies have been sent uh, is like a four core processor. So is that all four cores running at 4.5 gigahertz for an engineering sample? Or is it just one CPU core? And it's the same thing for these retail configurations as well. Is it five gigahertz for let's say one to two cores and then 4.8 gigahertz or 4.9 gigahertz for a couple of more cores and it starts dropping down much like, well, Intel CPUs do or uh, other AMD CPUs have done. So it's gonna be really interesting. One thing that I have heard consistently though is Precision Boost and XFR are even more advanced in these CPUs. So in theory, at least, they're going to be able to be more consistent in higher clock frequencies. Well, it's gonna be a really interesting Computex, let's just be honest. Keeping on the subject of AMD, but also bringing Sony into the mix, let's discuss the special sauce that Lisa Sue is brewing. We are so honored and proud to be part of Sony's next generation PlayStation, says Lisa Sue. This has been a really long-term partnership with them. We love gaming. We think as gaming is really good 
uh, secular growth market we have done a lot with sony to really architect something for the application for their special source so there's that term that everyone loves it's been a great honor for us and we're really excited about what the next generation playstation will do and we're happy to be part of it end quote obviously lisa sue does not give any information she doesn't give the game away um but I think the term special source with consoles is like this mystic term that a lot of marketing buzz really like leeches onto. But the reality is, of course, special source in some cases is kind of true. Like, for example, we saw some certain custom hardware in the PlayStation 4 with, uh, let's say, the volatile bit, which was part of the level 2 cache. This allowed uh, compute commands which were stored in level 2 to be basically deleted only so you didn't have to nuke the entire level 2 cache if you wanted to remove uh, compute commands from the level 2 cache instead you could just do it selectively with what was known as a volatile bit so that was something that sony requested because obviously compute and the playstation 4 were really really important because well the cpu just wasn't that powerful on the ps4 and microsoft of course also had various custom uh, chips and bits and bobs added to the Xbox uh, One as well and from what we understand about the next generation PlayStation there are numerous uh, tweaks that Sony have included in uh, uh, 3D audio processor though we're not sure whether that's actually on the APU itself it's possibly not my guess is that it's probably part of the APU but obviously we don't have a block diagram yet so that's just a guess on my part ray tracing Plus, almost certainly there are going to be some tweaks to the GPU as well as the CPU. Uh, this is just a pure guess on my part, but it's possible to save die space. They may reduce the size of the level 3 cache on the CPU because the level 3 cache does eat up a lot of die space. But then again, maybe they don't. It's going to really depend, of course, internally on their own performance metrics. Several people have reported that it is a Zen 2 CPU but with customization so it's not just like oh well it's Zen 2 but they've just simply lowered the frequency to 3.2 gigahertz which is the reported clock speed of course for the eight uh, CPU cores inside the PS5. You've heard me say this many times before and I'm going to say it many times more the next 12 to 18 months in technology is going to be fascinating not least of all because Intel will be entering the discrete GPU market meaning they join AMD and Nvidia. From what we've heard from Intel along with leaks themselves they are going to be targeting the performance leader in both data center as well as gaming and I recently did attend the company's uh, Odyssey event in San Francisco during GDC 2019. I've also done a rather in-depth analysis of what we've known so far regarding the Intel XE architecture. I'll try to remember to link it in the description of this very video. But aside from that, there has been a very interesting announcement that's taken place over the last day or so, and that is that Intel will officially be supporting hardware ray tracing for the Intel XE graphics. I'm pleased to share today that Intel's XE architecture roadmap for data center optimized rendering includes ray tracing hardware acceleration support for Intel's rendering framework family of APIs and libraries. And there is also another thing that's really curious to me, and that is that the company are promising a quote holistic platform approach to ray tracing, which will tap into both CPUs as well as GPUs. Given Intel's announcement of their holistic approach, it makes me wonder what the company are planning in the future with specific platforms for ray tracing. Unfortunately, they did not mention gaming, although I would be very surprised indeed if we did not see some form of ray tracing support in hardware for gaming. I think by the time 2020 rolls around, particularly given the PlayStation 5 supports ray tracing, it's almost certain that the next generation Xbox supports hardware ray tracing. Several leaks have uh, insinuated that it does. Plus the fact that Microsoft created DXR, and I don't think they would have done so purely as a Windows type of thing. I think that they would have done it for the Xbox as well. And NVIDIA, of course, are banking big on ray tracing. We have know that uh, uh, AMD are pushing ray tracing, so I, I would be shocked if uh, Intel do not support it for gaming. 
And there are a lot of potential possibilities as well, especially with things such as 3D stacking from Intel, Frovoros technology and all of their uh, interconnectivity that they've been discussing uh, recently, plus of course the uh, persistent Optane memory. It's just going to be really interesting to see what solutions that they can come up with and of course what type of competition that they can bring to the market and how AMD and as well Nvidia will counter. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, well, normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.